Hi everyone! In this tutorial we'll have a look at how to create a skin for your virtual tour and what options you have when it comes to skin elements and their functions. What is a skin? A skin is basically what your viewers will see on top of your panoramas. So whatever they will use in order to maneuver the tour, such as play buttons, fast forward or zoom, but also info boxes or logos that are fixed on top of the actual virtual tour. You can either select a skin at the very beginning of creating a virtual tour in one of the pop-up windows or via the skin tab within the program's main mask at any point throughout the process of creating your virtual tour. You can select entire skins or create your own ones by adding library components or importing your own buttons, pictures or boxes. Of course you can always combine your own elements with library elements which pop up when selecting one of these skin elements. But what types of elements can I actually use in a skin? As you can see you have the initial main viewer in which your panoramas and virtual tour media will play already here on the screen. Now you can add an additional viewer to simultaneously play other media. You can place interactive floor plans that will show on top of your tool for better orientation. You can place containers to organize a bunch of individual elements such as buttons. You can place text and more stylable text boxes with headings, subtitles and main body. You can integrate images such as logos or pre-designed text boxes. These images can even carry actions that will be triggered when the audience clicks on them. You can use buttons with editable text or normal buttons without text. You can place info windows with tabs which can for example be called with a button from within the skin. You can place drop down menus, thumbnail lists as an overview of your virtual tools media elements. And finally you can place button sets, saving you the work of combining and placing individual buttons. There are more detailed video tutorials on each of these skin elements. And once you created a skin that you would like to use frequently, you can save it and select it with just one click in future tours, or even pass it on to a colleague for him to import it into his 3D Vista virtual tour program. This you can do with individual skin elements that you have created, or even with entire skins. Now to understand the workflow, let us create a typical skin together. Usually, I personally am not entirely sure what my skin should look like before actually creating the tour, so I tend to select an empty skin in the initial pop-up window and get back to creating a skin from within the main mask later on. However, as I just said, you can save skins that you created for future use so that you won't have to create them from scratch for every single tour. If you did, you can select this skin already here in this pop-up window at the beginning. Of course, you can always edit it later on in the skin tab. Anyways, in my example, I selected an empty skin and created my basic virtual tour with four panoramas. So now, before publishing, I go to the Skin tab to create my skin. Even though the viewers can actually maneuver the tour by clicking and dragging the mouse cursor over the screen, I want to include a typical control panel with play, pause, left, right, zoom and all that jazz. So by clicking on the button sets button, I can choose from the set library. For better orientation, you can sort the options by type on the left. Select the set of buttons that you wish and click on the canvas to place it. Now the good thing about choosing buttons from the library is that they already carry the corresponding action. By double clicking on the action you can change it. Next I want to place a thumbnail list to allow my viewers to jump quickly from one panorama to another. The process is exactly the same. Select your favorite thumbnail list and click on the canvas to place it. 
Now I can easily edit this list's design with the options on the right. I can change the list's background color and opacity, whether I want its edges to be sharp or round, and the scroll bar if I need one. I can also change the gap between the thumbnails and the label, size and shape of the thumbnails, and which media to show. Okay, so so far I have included two major skin elements, a container with several buttons and a thumbnail list. When selecting these elements here on the canvas, you can see that they are also selected in my list of skin elements here on the right. As I select the buttons container, you can see that the blue frame jumps to the corresponding element. If the selected element is a container, you can see a second list below which contains all of the elements within this container. In these two lists, I can change the components' names to better recognize them, or delete any of them. The little eye-shaped icon indicates whether the component is visible, showing on top of your tour, or not. If it is not, it won't show in the canvas, so this list right here helps you to keep track of all the elements included in your skin, visible or not. Now, why would I want to include an element that is invisible? Well, these settings here are universal, so elements with an eye show in every panorama and media of this virtual tour. But sometimes I might want to have a skin element that only shows in a specific panorama. Here's an example. I created this component of hotspots that only refer to panorama 2. So what I do is I untick the container here in the universal skin setting, you might want to change the name to be able to find it later, and I go to the panorama where I want it to show. I click on the subtab Start and look for the container. Then I merely tick that I want this component to show when entering this panorama, therefore in. If you also tick Out, the component will continue showing in whatever the subsequent media is. This mechanism allows you to have different elements in different panoramas, something that is super useful if you want to have informative text boxes for each room, for example. So the way you proceed is you place all text boxes, in my case there were images that I previously created, untick them or make them invisible in the universal skin settings, and then enter each panel to individually tick the respective skin element. Now, without going into too many further details, let's quickly have a look at how to proceed when adding your own buttons, rather than using the library. In that case, you click on Icon button and select New. Then you navigate to where you store your button files, select one, and click on the canvas to place it. Unlike when using the library, this button does not have an action assigned to it yet, so apart from editing size and position, this is what you'll have to do. To assign an action, click Add Action and select the one that suits your button. There are many actions to choose from. Typical control buttons, such as Play, Pause, Zoom, etc. Buttons to show or hide other components on the screen. Buttons to open a website. Play a video or audio. Or buttons to open a photo album, a panorama, an info window or a pop-up image. And finally, there are buttons to move to the next or go back to the previous media of your Virtual Tools playlist. So this was our little introductory video on skins. I hope it helped you understand what it is that you can do with skins. As I said, there are extra tutorials on the different skin element types so that you can find step-by-step -step instructions on whatever kind of button or window you want to create. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.